Good morning, everybody. Um, you, uh, this is the class which you are going to take, Physics for Science and Engineering. If you confuse the, the room, it's time to, to leave. Um, my name is uh, Jersey Robble. You probably notice that there is some uh, video equipment at the back. This class is, uh, uh, go is going to be recorded and you can watch, uh, if you miss something, you can watch this lecture on YouTube. Um, in the future, this course is going to be offered on through internet and maybe I won't even have to show up in the class at all. Um, I would like to start with the syllabus then, so I'll pass the syllabus. And, uh, well, today I would like just to review this, the syllabus. Uh, it's uh, worth uh, the time because it makes our arrangement, it sets up the law in the classroom which we will have to obey, and I will try, I'll, st I'll stick pretty close to the syllabus. Um, so, the first inf piece of information on the syllabus is who I am. Well, it's again me. Uh, I am a professor in the physics department, and you can find me in room 250J in this building. Um, if you wish to contact me, you can do it either by phone or uh, sending me an email. Uh, I created a website uh, for, for this class um, and here is the address uh, uh, for that website. Uh, on this website you will find uh, material related to this, uh, to this uh, course uh, link to the blackboard. How many of you uses blackboard? Uh, actually, it's easier the other way. Who doesn't use blackboard? That's great. So I assume that everybody uses blackboard. Well, so uh, whatever, probably, I mean, I would probably even put more information than on the blackboard. Things like assignments. Assignments will be on both. Uh, on both uh, lectures will be also available on both. Uh, but the solution for homeworks, for example, I think I, uh, I re uh, figured out, well, actually, uh, one of the students uh, pointed it out that if I put it on the, uh, <coughs> on the website that they are too available and they circulate before actually I even assign the homework. The solutions uh, circulate before uh, I assign the homework. Um, you can uh, see me without, a, without uh, an appointment on Monday or Thursday at 9 o'clock, right after the class. Uh, today at 9, I already have an, an appointment, so uh, I won't be available uh, at 9 today. Um, you can also uh, meet me by sending me either an email or calling me, in other, or, or even you can uh, talk to me. Although the best way is to uh, send an email when you would like to make an appointment and give me, let's say, three uh, options. Uh, usually I will be able to adjust my uh, schedule in such a way that I can uh, pick one of those uh, slots. Uh, objective of this course these are the objective of this course, and actually uh, some of you may be confused about the objectives because it doesn't even look like physics is, is here. I, I put physics as the fourth objective, and really this is less important than, than the preceding three. Um, really, even if we consider these two courses, Physics 1 and Physics 2, uh, we will just learn a fraction of physics, tiny fractions. Uh, not only that, uh, I will even taught you, uh, 
uh, lies. It's not true what I'm going to teach you here. And one more thing, I'm not going to teach you actually. I, I forgot about that. I'm going to help you to learn. You have re responsibility to learn the material. I will be just assisting you uh, to do this. Well, the most important thing is to develop abstract thinking. Because uh, in the devel development of human individual, uh, the first uh, way of learning or uh, ac actually even grasping or accumulating knowledge is uh, through so-called concrete learning. Uh, we, uh, I mean, think, ha think how you learned so far, and particularly when you were very small. I remember my niece when she was two and I was fixing a TV. She was very excited by the fact that I was fixing a TV because it was open, she could see a lot of things. And <coughs> well, I was, I was using an oscilloscope and I thought, well, since she is so interested, I'll teach her a little bit about this too. So I uh, uh, connected the oscilloscope to various places in which uh, I could see the, uh, uh, the signal, the television signal. Um, and I just, I even called it, I think, audio-video signal. And, uh, um, and then I was explaining about various systems. Over there were what, what is uh, the uh, cathode ray tube and uh, uh, high frequency uh, amplifier, low frequency amplifier, speakers, and so on. And <coughs> At a certain point, I asked, do you understand? And she said, yes. Because uh, I realized that at, that at this point, uh, understanding or not understanding is, do you understand the words? Do you recognize the words? So she was recognizing the words. Uh, I still, uh, she recognized the language. So this is why she said, uh, uh, yes. Because I remember uh, uh, hearing a co uh, her conversation with another a kid and the question between the kids was, do you speak? Not do you speak English or Polish, just do you speak? Um, so, uh, after that question, I thought, I'm going to test her. And I connected again the oscilloscope and I asked her, what do you see? And she says, video audio signal. Sh she didn't know anything about that. She just accepted whatever I said, for granted. And this is how we learn at the beginning. We are trying to memorize. Uh, well, <coughs> unfortunately, the amount of knowledge which we accumulated is too large. Uh, for example, uh, Galileo did experiments of dropping, dropping things from various heights. Well, in principle, we could learn that. How much time does it take for an object to fall from one meter? How much time does it take for an object to fall from two meters, from three meters, five, ten, and so on? And we can remember two columns of numbers, and, and we can even make, well, thousand rows. Well, then <coughs> we would not create, and an engineering wouldn't work. There is too much information to remember. You just to remember how much time do things fall will take too much of your gray cells to learn more. Well, therefore, uh, we develop a certain, I mean, different way of thinking. We, we uh, uh, develop this abstract thinking in which we, we can recognize certain discernible patterns in the nature and then things become logical. Uh, I mean, this logic is, is also kind of nonsense, uh, but at least it re uh, allows us to remember it well. I, mean, I am, uh, I am this, uh, this type of a person that, that I really forgot how to, how to 
learn that, that in that concrete way. And, uh, and I, I had already problem with that uh, uh, when I was a student. So for example, I remember my room number in the dorm that it was 25 square minus one square because it, it was part of a certain mathematical formula, right? Uh, one of my colleagues immediately noticed that it is uh, also equal 26 times 24, right? All right, uh, <laughs> now, for this abstract thinking, uh, you, you will see that actually uh, mathematics gives a good background. Um, we advance mathematics because of physics quite a lot. Uh, and and uh, we are kind of lucky in physics and engineering because um, we can develop this, uh, this type of thinking because the part of nature which we are going to study here is simple. In other words, I'm saying that physics is simple. Physics is the simplest of the subjects. Um, and uh, are there any biology students here? You would believe that biology is simpler, right? Uh, now, why? Because biology, is, biology happens uh, to be so complicated that we haven't even developed appropriate models for abstract thinking. Biologists still learn mainly in a concrete way. You have to remember things. Now, uh, how simple is physics compared to biology? Uh, I mean, the best illustration will be, let's try to find out how far in the future we can predict. Yeah, so, if we, if we have a certain state of a biological system, take a, take a system around you. Or even not around you, take yourself. What will be your state three days after today? Most likely you will be healthy, but I mean there is, but, but, but really you don't know if you are going to have pneumonia, uh, flu, or whatever. Uh, now, in physics, we are able to predict, oh well, uh, I forgot how many years we have to wait for Halley's comment? It was somewhere in the 80s. We know that it comes, come, comes back every 80 years. Well, but even we can control things. We are able to shoot a spacecraft into space and know that it is going to arrive in two years to Mars. Considering physics problems, we can really look far, far into the future and we can really predict what will happen. Much further than we can predict with biology. Uh, now, in order to think, we need something. Yeah, because now, think how you think. What do you do when you think? How? How do we process information? Uh, how do we compare? Well, I'll, I'll let you know. I, I tell you how, you how you think. You talk to yourself most of the time. I mean, sometimes you, you can also see pictures. And these are the two ways of thinking. You either talk to yourself or, uh, or see pictures. Uh, now, in order to talk to yourself, you need words. And this is why we need to enrich our technical vocabulary. Technical vocabulary will allow you to think uh, like an engineer. And not only that, you will be able to communicate with each other. Um, all right, now when we, ha when we have the skill of abstract thinking and we, we have, well, if we have appropriate vocabulary, we can take a look how to analyze various aspects of nature. 
and uh, I'm not sure if I'm sh I should be proud to say that after uh, recent events, but a lot of physicists, for example, were hired on Wall Street. And what was the reason for that? Because market is also, well, some uh, natural phenomenon. So they just grab people who are able to look at that system, analyze it, and, uh, and develop uh, certain models. Actually, I remember a talk from a person who worked in marketing. He was, uh, he was a nuclear physicist, and uh, he probably still works at Sprint, uh, but analyzing markets. And uh, uh, somebody during his presentation asked, uh, how come that a nuclear physicist does that? And he said, the equations look the same. The meaning of the symbols are just different. All right. And the final thing, we will learn some physics. So this is fourth objective and, and just really two subjects in physics. We will learn mechanics and thermodynamics this semester. In the future, in the next semester, uh, we will learn practically one subject, electromagnetism. Um, I mean, you can think about optics as a separate, uh, separate one, but it's kind of, I mean, it's, it's now uh, combined with electromagnetism. All right. This is the textbook which we are going to use. It's Physics for Scientists and Engineers, 8th edition by survey. Uh, oh, it's not Beichner. And drew it. Uh, and actually, I don't insist uh, that you use a eight edition. Um, you can use any textbook. Physics, which we are going to learn, is it has not changed for at least hundred years. Uh, the textbooks only change. Um, and actually, what changes in the textbook mainly is the problems uh, at the at the back of the chapter so um, if you want to use uh, to 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 use a second hand uh, textbook and seventh edition it's fine as well i when i'm going to, i will be assigning problems which are simultaneously in both editions so uh, you can and i will give the numbers in both editions. So you, you, you can have a uh, seventh edition as well. Uh, in principle, you can even take a textbook written by other uh, authors. It doesn't have to be Survey or, or Beichner uh, and, and uh, Jewett. Uh, then the problems will be different. So you will have to, to check the problems from, uh, from a friend. We are going to, well, the material for the course is 22 chapters. The first 22 chapters, if you have, uh, and I uh, recommend that you uh, get a textbook which has uh, both parts, because most of you probably will take Physics 1, Physics 2 he, with me as well. Um, although this book also uh, has two volumes, so you can you can buy it either one volume which contains everything or, or the first volume. And the material in these uh, 22 chapters contains kinematics and dynamics of a particle. Um, kinematics and dynamics of a system of particles. Kinematics and dynamics of a rigid body and of an electric me uh, 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 elastic medium. All of this is uh, mechanics. And the second part will be uh, thermodynamics. I think the last four, uh, the last three chapters are is thermodynamics, or maybe four. Uh, now, 
for each discussed chapter, I want you to solve all problems which are boxed. This is your homework assignment. At the end of the chapter, uh, some, pr some numbers are in a box. Now, those, num those problems with numbers in a box, uh, I mean, this box indicates that the problem is solved in a student study guide. So, uh, if you need some help, you can go to the uh, study guide and, uh, and see the solution. Additionally, uh, there will be assignments for which you will have to submit the solution for a grade. I wanted actually to give you some uh, credit for solving problems. So this is why I, I ask that, although it puts additional burden on the uh, graduate teaching assistants, However, I think that it is important important part. Um, now, late submissions will not be accepted. Um, when I assign a homework, I want that homework back the following uh, month, uh, the following in a week. Now, I want prepare your homework in a neat way, and uh, maybe I'll go make a. Stop over here and go to uh, oops, to that web page. I'll copy the. All right, so this is our web page. Uh, here is information. Uh, uh, here is information about our class. Oh, so actually, it isn't. Uh, this is for both classes which I teach. This is our our uh, class. Uh, so you can mark actually this web page. I advise you to mark this web page. Uh, if you click over here, you will get to to the syllabus. Uh, here you can get link to uh, to the lecture notes and um, if you haven't bought i mean it's cheaper actually to buy lecture notes i want to save your time so i prepared the notes for you and i uh, left a lot of room so that you can still scribble on it and uh, however the printed uh, printed version is black and white. If you want to have it in color, then you can go to uh, to this web page and and get to to the mature. To, I mean, print it out. So what what whatever I discuss is is here. Uh, and there are also examples of tests although I probably will change them. Uh, here are notes for entire semester, and uh, they are in bunches of 20. Um, here is a link to the to homework assignment, and you already have the first homework assignment. It's uh, due by January 18th. If you use seventh edition, these are the problem numbers. And happens that in the eighth edition, the numbers are identical. And uh, when you submit the homework for a grade, it has to, I want really to develop uh, in you uh, skill of preparing reports because do you know what consumes most of my time as a physicist 
writing. No, force diagrams don't. I mean, I never think about force diagrams. Writing. I write articles, reports, and most of, and a lot, I have to write a lot of things for my begging activity. In other words, proposals. Uh, engineers do that too. You will be writing reports to, to your customers, but before you actually write the report to a customer, you will, ha you will have to grab that customer. And you know, how do you grab a customer? You write a proposal. My wife, for example, works for Cerner Corporation, and next week she is supposed to submit four proposals for the company. All right. So uh, I want you to develop a proper way of preparing documents. It has to be neatly prepared. Packaging is very important in, uh, in, uh, in the world. Um, so, <laughs> identify the question. You, you don't necessarily have to copy the, the text of the, uh, of the question, uh, but it has to be clear which problem you, s you are solving. If it is appropriate, make a drawing to illustrate the situation. Looking at the drawing actually g gives you a lot of hints how the problem is supposed to be solved. Uh, justify and explain the solution. Make sure that whenever you use a symbol, it is clear what, the sim what, the, what is the meaning of the symbol. I also advise you not to use one symbol for more than one quantity. If you use V for volume, make sure not to use V for velocity. Make a different symbol for velocity and speed, because these are two different quantities. Uh, and all of them start with V. Um, so, in explanation, it has to be clear what is what of what. Now, you will have also I also require that whenever you make a statement, you uh, have an answer why, or what, is it, what, is, what it is based on. Like over here, for example, in, in, this, reference in this reference frame, Newton's second law is valid. This is a justification. We are using, I'm using here Newton's second, second law. Right, then <laughs> write relevant relations. And don't, yeah, because I mean, if you, if you write too many equations, you can get confused. You, you can confuse yourself. Uh, it happens often that uh, uh, you get equations that, that mathematically you will find several solutions. Like, for example, if I, if I toss, toss this mouse, I don't want to toss it. And I write an equation how much time it, for, for time uh, when it is in flight, I, will get, I would get a quadratic equation. Quadratic equation has in 0, 1, or 2 solutions. With the initial, initial conditions from my hand, this quadratic equation will have 2 solutions. One positive, one negative, mathematically. Mathematically, there will be two solutions. Then you have to find out uh, figure out which solution to take and justify why. So for example, for tossing the, the mouse, which of the solutions would you choose? Positive or negative? Positive. Why? We can have negative, I'm not sure what do you mean negative time. We can have negative time. But the, but the time, time uh, which, which it takes to fly, I mean to be in air, has to be positive. We'll see in the future what, what, are, uh, what are negative times. And, and actually, 
uh, well, it happens that uh, word time has a multiple meaning, and one of the times cannot be negative, one of the times can be negative. Uh, all right. And in this link, I will, uh, I will show you what, uh, I mean, right now I will remove uh, whatever document is there. And uh, write information about the final examination. Actually, I thought that I shouldn't have it. No, it is updated. OK. Uh, great. So let's come back to the review of the syllabus. Homework quizzes. Okay. At the beginning of each lecture, we could have a quiz. Um, I will give this quiz with probability of 50%. And uh, it, will, it will be always a five minute quiz. Here is an example. It will concern uh, definitions, concepts, or laws. I'm not giving the quiz today, so, so you don't have to answer the quiz. This is just an example of a quiz, and it is based on your current, current knowledge. Um, the question is about uh, Pythagorean uh, theorem, and why don't we answer actually? What, th what is what of what? Can you answer that? <coughs> um, the hypotenuse is c squared, and the actually c, uh, c squared is not hypotenuse. Yeah, because on the quiz we have a square uh, a square plus b square equals c square. Oh, c, c is uh, I, it's better, although it is not hypotenuse because. What is hypotenuse? It's a side of a triangle, right? A hypotenuse is a segment. It's an, a geometrical object. Now, C is related to that hypotenuse. How? How C is related to hypotenuse? It's the length of the hypotenuse, right? Do you see that? Yes, so C is the length of the hypotenuse. Now, how about A? You are Nathan, right? Yeah. Okay, Nathan. So what is A? Um, A is the length of the uh, shortest side. Actually, it doesn't matter if shortest, but one of the sides. Which sides? Um, one of the sides that's connected to the uh, 90 degree angle. Correct. Ad adjacent to the 90 degree angle. And B is the l not the other side. B is not the side. What is it? Length of the side. Correct. Uh, all right. So actually, if you said, I mean, let's, let's say that, that we, we take uh, that, uh, the answer uh, Oops, I didn't. Uh, the answer which Nathan just quoted, that a square or c square is square of, hy no, just hypotenuse, and a square and b square are sides. This is worth 0.3 uh, on my scale. Uh, you have some vague idea about it. If you, if you uh, called A, B, and C that they are hypotenuse and sides, this will be point, point 0.7. You have quite good idea. If you put lengths, then it's a perfect answer. So this is worth uh, 100%. Uh, now, I realize uh, that uh, for, from time to time, there will be some kind of an obstacle that you cannot come on time to take the quiz or you cannot come at all. So um, 
the total score from the quizzes will be multiplied by 1.2. So this takes care of those uh, unusual circumstances that you couldn't take. So there will be no makeup quizzes. Uh, this factor actually allows you to miss a certain number of quizzes. We will have four tests during the semester. Oh, and these are written, uh, on the syllabus it's, it's written right. Yeah, there are four? Yeah. Okay, so here is a mistake. I, 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 in the past I had five. They will be offered at the specified times, times which I indicated on the handout. And, and if you go to the web page and, and take a look at the syllabus over there, it will be, uh, the uh, dates will be la uh, listed also properly. On the test, uh, there will be always one problem concerning concept law and laws. It will come, it will come, uh, there will be four question. So you will have to describe four of laws of a concept. So A, B, and C, A, B, C, and D. And three problems from the book. Sometimes I will modify the problem to make it either simpler or more difficult. The great composition includes four tests, each at 10%. So you can collect 40% from the tests. Uh, lab grade will cons uh, contribute 20%. Homework is going to contribute 20%. And final exam is going to contribute 20%. Now, quizzes are extra credit, uh, uh, are for extra credit. So, each of the quizzes is worth 1%. So, in principle, I mean, considering probability, uh, you can collect uh, enough credit so that you don't have to take final exam and get a high score. Uh, because m uh, since we have uh, 15 weeks, uh, four uh, uh, days a week we have a class, so it is going to be 60 classes, or 60 meetings. With probability of 50%, the expected value of number of quizzes which you will write is 30. Uh, so with 1%, with you can collect 30, over 30% 30, uh, from the quizzes. Um, in other words, it, it's worth coming. Have you noticed that? <laughs> All right. And uh, this is the grade scale. I have to back off from something in this case. Actually, I will not multiply it by 1.2. Quizzes won't be multiplied by 1.2, so it will give you exactly 30%. Uh, I mean, expected, expected value of the score from the quizzes will be 30%. Um, all right. And here's the grade scale. I'm giving pluses and minuses, and I also want, don't want actually one test really to pull you down. So my scale is really stretched. Uh, if you collect 85% or higher, you will be in an A range, including A minus. From 70 to 85% is B range. C is from 55 to 70. D is from 40 to 55, and if you don't collect 40%, you will not uh, uh, pass the class. And, and actually, I will, uh, I will warn you first and advise you to withdraw from the class before the deadline. Uh, now, a certain uh, academic contact is uh, required from all students, and every instructor is obligated actually to report inappropriate uh, uh, behavior. Um, I'm not sure how many of you heard about it, but even a dean can lose a job if uh, uh, 
due to dishonesty. Um, so any type of, uh, of alleged uh, dishonesty, I will have to report it to the primary administrative officer at, at the university. And uh, I will also have a right to, to make an ac academic judgment. Um, so I can lower grade uh, if, I, if I find somebody, for example, cheating on the test. Well, here is the final note. I request that uh, you turn off electronic uh, devices, particularly cellular phones, or at least silence them. Uh, according to the catalog, an average student should spend about two hours studying outside the class for every uh, hour uh, he or she spends in the class. Now, this course is rather hard. Um, consider, con consider I, I mean, if you, if you find out on the quizzes that you are getting lost, that, that you are confused about the quizzes, uh, then consider quickly spending more than two hours per one hour in the classroom. Uh, I, saw, I, I suggest that you solve as many problems from the back of the chapter as you can. The, the one from in the boxes are homework assignments, which, which I consider that you are obligated to solve them. And uh, preferentially, I will choose those box problems for the tests. However, for you to comprehend the material, um, try to find time to solve all problems. I have students who solve all problems. I solve all problems in my textbook too. Um, yeah, because I, I know that <coughs> in principle you can learn how to solve box problem, problems and get uh, uh, good grades. Um, but good grades will only allow you to, will help you to find the first job. They will not uh, secure the job. You can lose it. And b per your performance will determine if you keep the job or not, not the grades. So make sure that you are well prepared for the profession. Um, also, if you learn physics, uh, your engineering classes will become really simple. If you barely comprehend physics, you will struggle for the rest of your academic career. All right. Uh, now, the benefits from the lectures will increase significantly if you come prepared for the, for the lecture. I suggest that you read the book ahead of the lecture. And actually in the notes, uh, there are numbers in front of the subject. They correspond to the numbers in the, in the textbook. So if you see in the notes 5.1, it means that this is fifth chapter section one in the, uh, in the textbook. And I think that this is all what I wanted to say today. Thank you very much and see you tomorrow.